Mully and Hall, Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, it's uh, Bears Monday, and this season they're presented by Horizon Therapeutics, and we are delighted to welcome in the football man from the Chicago Tribune, a longtime contributor to the station and a valued friend. He is Brad Biggs, and he joins us now on the Signature Bank Score Hotline, Signature Bank Making Commercial Banking Personal Big Z. Morning, Brad. Morning, boys. What's going on? Yeah, we're just trying to figure out uh, when when the uh, when the good performances that improve your draft selection no longer matter, and and if uh, if losing to a team that had lost, I believe it's thirteen straight road games, including eleven in the in the Dan Campbell era, whether losing that game yesterday should matter when you have a, a lead going into the fourth quarter seems like not a lot of people care. I wonder if, uh, if the coaches are peeved with themselves. Oh, I'm sure the coaches care. Uh, the players care. The folks at the folks at house hall care, you know, because not only do you lose to the lions, but they had a, they had a 14 point lead in the fourth quarter with, you know, so you got, you got to find a way to put that game away and they had uh mistakes in all three phases and as we know as we've talked about the margin for error with this team is is just incredibly slim and so when you have some of the mistakes that kind of compounded things uh on sunday yeah you're gonna end up on the wrong side of that and and now uh you know detroit's feeling a little bit better about itself beats uh, the Packers a week ago right. and comes into soldier field and gets a rare road victory. I don't think they've had a victory in a comeback like that for the lions in 29 years, Brad. So that was historic for them as well. A lot of history being made yesterday from the 29 points or more for three straight games and losing. Um, and you look at Justin Fields with his long run, when you when you start to prioritize or make a list, Brad, of where things got away from the Bears, or when you remember this game and what went wrong, um, and what led to the victory, where how does your list start? Well, there's a there's a lot of different ways uh, you can go, but the, to to me, the, the number one thing is the defense can't get stops at critical points to get off the field. Period. Right, and and. Does that surprise you when you watch the Bears play this season? No, you've you've seen them um, have the darndest time uh, on third down. But at critical points in the game, they are unable to get stops and get off the field, and and that's where that's where it starts. That that's uh, that's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, the the defense it was a struggle, and I think that um, when you look at the um, the idea, the whole strategy of the kind of uh, punt and pin, um, it, it blows up on you when you have a team with their worst field position of the game and they just march down the field and win the game. I, I, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how else to kind of underscore where it went wrong, but they, they, it, it's not a question of whether or not this team can close. It's a question of whether they can stop anyone this year. It's, it's everyone gets 30. I mean, they are, that's pretty bad stuff. Yeah, that's hard to do. And, and when you've got Jared Goff in third and eight, uh, I believe the bears were in time personnel there uh, in that game winning drive and the, uh, the Blitzmore crowd, uh, which is vocal got, uh, got what it wanted on that snap. They sent, I believe, six rushers and so they've got man coverage behind it and uh tom kennedy the uh, wide receiver in case you're not aware of tom kennedy guys he started at bryant university that's where he played this college ball at chris bryant and he's been on the practice <laughs> yeah, no. he's a professional lacrosse know. player too isn't he and I'm just into the guy's football background, okay? <laughs> he spent most of his career on the practice squad, and uh, it looked like maybe Jalen Johnson thought that Kennedy was running a, a sit route, like at the sticks. Like Johnson was going to be very cognizant of something that was right near the marker because it's third down and eight. Well, um, 
So he stops his feet, and Kennedy did not stop his feet, and, and that's how you get this uh, massive 44-yard play uh, that puts the Lions, what, down to the, I think, the Bears' 13-yard line, and they score like two plays later. Um, almost one of those deals where the Lions scored so fast, you're like, oh, boy, Detroit left a lot of time on the clock for Justin Fields and the Bears here, uh, but uh, it, it, it did not end up mattering. All right, Brad, so Justin Fields, 147 yards rushing, 10 design runs, highlight reel play again, record-setting uh, touchdown run. So that's the good news. The pick six in the fourth quarter with a lead at home, mortal sin for an NFL quarterback, that's the bad news. How do you categorize what kind of game Justin Fields had against the Lions when he had the fourth quarter where he completed two passes for 13 yards? Well, overall, it's a good game, right? When you talk about the quarterback uh, being responsible for three touchdowns, two of them uh, by air, one of them the 67-yard run. Uh, the Bears uh, put up 408 yards offense. They're 6 of 11 on third down. Um, that's a good game. Uh, and he was electric again with his legs. Uh, I thought the Lions did a respectable job of preventing the scrambling, okay? The field drops back to pass, doesn't like what he sees or starts to get pressure, and so he eludes the pocket. That wasn't really the killer for Detroit. It was the design runs. It's a, it's a read option on the first snap of the game that goes for 28. Um, it's a read option uh, there in the fourth quarter that goes for 67. Um, that's, uh, that's probably two-thirds of his rushing yardage right there. Uh, on those two plays, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but the passing game remains the uh, same issue as it was a week ago against the Dolphins. Bears are trailing by three um, in the fourth quarter, and when they had to throw the ball, uh, they were unable to. So they're going to keep working on it. As we've heard uh, Luke Getze say, they practice two minutes uh, more than any team uh, gets he's ever been associated with the offensive coordinator so hopefully uh, they'll get in a position um, where the entire unit quarterback included can uh, execute with, with the game on the line because the the way this defense is playing right now you have to figure with seven games left on the schedule uh, the Bears might find themselves in another shootout with an opportunity uh, to prevail late in the fourth quarter, um, especially if the last couple of weeks is any indication of what's uh, what's ahead. Brad, um, you know, Jack Sanborn had a really good game. He led the team in tackles with 12. I think nine were, uh, were solo tackles, and that's more than any other player on the team had combined. Um, I'm curious, a couple of sacks he's credited for, that, that interception – would have effectively ended the game, would have sealed the victory. Instead, it's called back over a kind of phantom penalty. Um, I, it did not look – it looked like the, the receiver's knee buckled and he went down, but they made that call. I'm just curious, when you add up all the penalties, they had uh, nine penalties for 86 yards, something like that. Was – were there more than one phantom? Were there a lot of them that really impacted the game? And, and what was your take on uh, on that play being erased? And then, obviously, the next play you have a you have a touchdown. Yeah, I, listen, there wasn't a bigger call that went against the Bears in terms of penalties than than that one on Jalen Johnson, where, um, yeah, the wide receiver just he just crumpled. Okay, and I saw Trinity Benson, the receiver in the locker room after the game, guys, and he was on crutches. So something happened where he either went to make a move or wh whatever. The knee gave out, and um, I don't know if the official thought that Johnson struck him in the face mask or not. I, you know, the, listen, the call's the call, and and that's not that's not a reviewable one, right? So you kind of have to live with it, but. Um, to your point, Sanborn uh, d did a nice job. And as much as we've hammered this Bears run defense, guys, and, and we've been on it all year long, 
talked about it before the season kicked off, how we figured this was going to be a major concern for this team. Bears played the run well yesterday. The Lions had 95 yards on 31 carries, you know, and, and shoot, Goff had that one 10-yard run uh, at the end. So, really, you talk about Jared Goff handing off to the backs, and they did less than three yards uh, a carry. So, uh, credit to Sanborn uh, and credit to those guys in the front seven for improving uh, in an area where they've been terrible. Uh, but but there was certainly better yesterday in that game, and, and that's why they had a chance. Brad, were you surprised at Cairo Santos yesterday, the way that he spoke about his missed extra point? And also, it, he just seemed a little bit off all day, whether it was on kickoffs, and certainly we saw him shank the PAT. Just He has been so good that maybe it stood out because he was inconsistent yesterday, but something seemed to miss. Well... Yeah, when you've got a when you've got a nice fall day, which yesterday uh, classifies as, and and your guy just hooks a, an extra point, a guy that's been super consistent, that's going to stand out a little bit. Um, he's still what is he fourteen for fourteen on field goals for the season, with uh, four four from forty to forty nine yards and four four from fifty plus. So um, he's been very good for them, and and he's been one of their, if not their most reliable uh, performer. Uh, The kick out of bounds, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get real upset about that. Number one, it didn't lead to anything on that ensuing possession for the um, Lions. And number two, you know, that goes into the strategy a lot of times where they will want uh, the kicker to try to put it um, not right on the sideline, but get it near the corner uh, for the coverage team. Hey, this is the strategy with the kick. This is where we're going. Um, obviously, that was a poor kick, uh, and you can't have those because it, it gives the opponent the ball on the 40. Uh, but again, the Lions got nothing out of that uh, uh, premium field position on that possession. This segment with Brad Biggs is brought to you by global biotech company Horizon Therapeutics, where science and compassion work together to transform lives. Um, I did the post-game show with Patrick Manley, Brad, and he was very interesting on that subject. He said that uh, first he said that, you know, that extra point came after kind of a sudden change, right? In other words. Yeah, the 60s, the long touchdown. Yes. So you're standing on the sideline. Oh, oh, we're up. And it did seem like they were rushing out there and they were, it just didn't, it didn't feel comfortable. And then the other thing he said is that he felt uh, the entire afternoon just the the rotation of the ball as uh, as Cairo Santos was hitting it just wasn't good. It just didn't like that that the um you, you mentioned the kickoff that went out of bounds. There was another one that almost went out of bounds, barely got in uh, uh, to the uh, to the end zone. But um, he just didn't have the flow he usually shows when he's kicking well. Well, it went from being, what, 70 degrees the week before exactly. against the Dolphins to, to 34 at kickoff yesterday. And certainly uh, the the kicker and the punter are very much affected uh, with their job by, by a big drop in temperature. The colder weather that was there yesterday and that we're going to see uh, for, for the home games moving forward at, at least is going to affect the ball flight. And so... Uh, hey, he's a veteran. He's been through that before. He's seen it before. It's not an excuse. I Listen, again, if we're going to talk about why they lost this football game yesterday, I, I'm going to go a lot of places before I'm going to go to Santos mm-hmm. because of the consistency that he's delivered to the team, not just this year, uh, but in previous years. And the defense was, was god-awful, and that's the number one uh, reason. And um, – being unable to get off the field and then with an opportunity to to go push for a field goal there that would win it at the end, uh, the Bears offense can't even get moving uh, at, the, at the very end. You're a longtime kicker guy, so I'm not surprised by that, Brad. Um, so, Dave, Dave, I'd uh, like to remind our listeners that you advocated for a <laughs> kicker tryout after the 49ers game in week one when he missed two extra points. 
And I thought that was uh, a classic knee-jerk reaction by you. Thank you. And his results wow. since have Thanks. proven that you were probably off the mark. That's noted for the record and ignored. All right, Brad, so in your 10 thoughts on ChicagoTribune.com, which we do a good job of promoting each and every Monday morning. So Jerry Tillery is a name that you, you refer to and you write about. The Chargers let him go. He's a defensive tackle who's a veteran. The Chargers have the defensive tackle problem. If anybody watched uh, Sunday Night Football, attrition has hit them, and yet they felt like they could live without Jerry Tillery. It's intriguing. You wondered in the in the piece, Brad, if the Bears might be interested. Might the Bears be interested? I maybe just to see if a, a uh, you know change of scenery would uh, would do him well. If you look at Jerry Tillery's uh, past, he has had. I want to say three or four quarterback pressures in games against the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe Ryan Poles was watching those games closely. Maybe he remembers that. But I'll tell you what, guys, it um, it stands out when a team that has D-line issues and injury issues uh, cuts bait with a first-round pick in the middle of the season. Like, they didn't trade him and get something. It's, they didn't get a conditional draft pick for Jerry Tillery. Uh, to unload them, uh, they said, hey, this is addition by subtraction. See you later, Jerry. Um, so there's some clear issues that he had in Los Angeles. Um, I would not be surprised if someone does claim him later today uh, to, to kick the tires on him. He's coming out of contract at the end of the season. So the idea would be if you're the Bears or whoever, bring the guy in. Uh, see what his makeup's like, see what he can do for about seven ball games, and, and then assess, you know, if he's someone that can be a, maybe you would be interested in having be a part of your future, uh, but he'll be a free agent. And if he comes in and, and you don't like the attitude and you're like, geez, I can see why the Chargers cut him. I can't believe they hung on to him this long. You can just cut him yourself. Yeah, um, look, they they obviously are uh, they're running out of players. I mean, they did, they didn't have a lot on the defensive line um, with uh, uh, Muhammad out. Uh, Tevin Jenkins goes out. That was a late yeah, stretch. Jenkins, I mean, yeah. That, yeah, Jenkins added to the um, injury report on Thursday with the hip. Yeah, I saw him come out of the locker room yesterday, guys. He's got a noticeable limp going on. You know, it's just a new kind of ailment for him, for a guy who's had, you know, a, a bunch of different things, none uh, none bigger than the back surgery to miss uh, last season. He, it, and it's a shame because he's played well when he's been out there this year. But this is a guy, I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, I mean, it seems like he's in the medical tent uh, almost every Sunday, hmm. and uh, he wasn't able to go yesterday. Hopefully uh, he'll be better sooner rather than later. All right, buddy. Thank you, Brad. We appreciate your time as always. Good stuff, Brad. Have a great day, guys. You too.